Streamlabs is sponsoring me to teach you how to take a Twitch clip and more easily edit it so that you can post it on social media. What do I mean by that? They've created this new app and desktop application called CrossClip, where you can easily take a clip and then basically format it for different social platforms, Facebook video, TikTok, Instagram reels, you name it, and then post it on socials faster without having to spend a lot of time in your video editor because time is money, right? You would, you would rather be playing games or creating content than sitting there editing your content. So I'm going to create a Twitch clip right now using one of my clients, MNJ TV's video. And what you're gonna do, go find your piece of content on Twitch. Then down here in the bottom right-hand corner, in the player, you're going to see that little um, old school film clicker box. You're going to either hit Alt X on your keyboard or manually click this button. What you're going to do is play the clip, kind of drag in the timeline here before you get started on Twitch. The spot that you want to be at in terms of clipping, that'll save you a lot of time. Then what you're going to do is hit Alt X or that button I just showed you a moment ago. It's gonna pull up a separate tab here, which is essentially a separate editing window. This is all within Twitch first. Then we're gonna take it into cross clip in just a moment. So what you're gonna do here, I very highly recommend really tightening up the beginning and the end of this clip, obviously limiting it to 60 seconds, of course, here on Twitch. Uh, where there's no fluff in the beginning, there's no fluff in the end, it's only the high-powered action part of the thing that you want to show your audience in nothing more and nothing less. And so for, that'll just be my example here. We'll call this clip number two. And then what you're going to do once you select the area of your Twitch clip, then you're going to hit the publish button after you name your clip. I very highly recommend naming your clip something very descriptive so you can understand what it is later hit publish and then it'll bring you through this publishing window and it'll take some amount of time uh, here to take care of the publishing depending on the complexity of the clip and uh, how burdened Twitch's servers are. While that's publishing there, hey, actually, it's ready right now. That was much faster than I thought. The clip will show up right here, so you can either hit the Copy to Clipboard button, or you can click the URL right here itself. Boom, it'll pop it onto your clipboard. That is the clip URL. That is essential for us to take that over to CrossClip now. So here in CrossClip, by the way, if you don't already know how to get to CrossClip, you can click the link below. It's just crossclip.com. Right here on the main page of crossclip.com, it'll say enter Twitch or YouTube clip URL. Just paste the clip URL that you just grabbed from Twitch and click get clip. Once you do that, it'll start pulling up this editing window where we can start to custom format our clip for social media. You see how fast that was? It's freaking great. Cross clips amazing. Now, the first thing you're going to want to look at here is you're going to want to select your output format. So what platforms are you looking to post your clip on? Portrait mode is good for TikTok and YouTube shorts. Landscape is good for a regular YouTube video. And obviously Square is good for Instagram and Facebook. You select which format you want based on the platform you're going after. Uh, most of you guys, I think, will want to do portrait for TikTok and YouTube shorts. That is the most popular. So we're just going to use that in today's example, but you can select the output format of your choice. The functionality is identical regardless of what you do. So there are two main components to the editing layout that is going to come standard with all of these clips. So number one is what is called the camera layer, and the camera layer is right here. And so the camera layer is basically this box right here in the left window. And you can drag that camera box anywhere you want. And preferably, of course, you would put it over the face of whoever is talking or one section of the content you're looking to capture. So in this case, I'm going to put it over m and TV's face here. So once I put it over his face there, then it will update within the camera box over here on the right um, if I give it a nice refresh or sometimes if I play the clip, it will go ahead and populate it and there it goes. And so there it is. Now you can see the camera here in the top under the output window. However, the content below may not be lined up properly. So what you're going to do with this green content window is you're going to drag it over to capture whatever the content is that you want to be capturing on the screen. In this case, I'll probably want it to be toward the center of the screen. I may want to, maybe want to eliminate some of the UI below only to capture what's going on here in Pokemon in this example so that our output 
is now nice and clean. Now in our output, I've only got his camera and what's happening inside the game right over here so that when we hit play, notice it refreshes the window. We've got a nice clean bit of gameplay here below and a nice clean camera, no extra letters or interface or anything. It's all super, super clean. Really cool, right? Couple other interesting features here with editing all of these items. You can tighten up the beginning of the clip down here in the timeline if it wasn't properly tightened up in the Twitch clipping process. You can also tighten up the end as you're kind of figuring this out and you can mute and unmute the clip right here as you're previewing it using the mute button. Now with something that's really important, this is just a standard layout here, this layout uh, for portrait, but you can change different layouts by going to the layouts button right up here and you can choose different presets that you want for this particular output. So you can either do camera on top gameplay below you could do camera below gameplay on top or some blurry version of that with landscape in the middle. You choose which format that you want based on uh, whatever your content will be best expressed by. Okay, so you'll need to select these different layouts. These are preset layouts that you can use uh, when you're editing your clip. Overall, for portrait, in my opinion, the best layout, of course, is camera on top, content below, because the camera will catch their attention, but you can choose the layout of your choice. Now, you can manually change the shape of the camera by going down here to the layers. So you see these locky and unlocky buttons? If you unlock the camera, if it's yellow, it's locked. If you unlock, it's unlocked there. You Instead of having it be landscape sized, for example, we could do portrait. So what do I mean by that? So what I would do is I would basically drag the camera around and you notice how it changed the shape of the camera now. So if I wanted the camera to be portrait sized and I want it to say be thinner size to capture someone's face, then it would become that. And then boom, uh, it would become that here for the output as well in terms of the capture. And so you can choose the format of the capture either on your camera or on your content according to what you want. The presets are my recommendation for how you should get started. So once you select the preset, you'll want to go over here into the editing window. And once you start kind of dragging the uh, window around here in the editor, it'll pop into the shape that you want it to be, okay? And if you're making any changes like I showed you earlier that you're not seeing reflected in the preview, the output here, all you have to do is just hit play and um, watch, boom. It just kind of populates it there into the output. So it's not constantly refreshing all the time like a normal video editor would because this is all on the cloud. So you need to hit the play button to get your output right here to refresh and show you the updates, okay? Uh, that's just saving system resources and that's saving you internet. A few final items here when it comes to editing this and then I'll show you how to export. There's a bunch of cool options. So by default, if you're doing the free version, it's gonna have a watermark in it and an outro promoting uh, this particular thing, promoting uh, cross clip. If you want to be able to turn those off, uh, you'll you'll have to go ahead and get Cross Clip Pro. Uh, you save 16% off if you pay it uh, yearly. It's only five bucks a month. You know, if you pay for it by the month or whatever, and it will remove the watermark, remove the outro video, give you full 1080p 60fps, and give you additional layers. I'm going to show you that in a moment, and give you 100 megabyte uploads. It's definitely worth paying for this if you're going to be using it on a regular basis. Try it for free, of course, but definitely pay to remove those items uh, from the edit here because it'll make your final product um, obviously more professional on your socials. And so what do you mean by additional layers? So if you pay for Pro, you can hit the Add Layer button and then it adds yet another uh, thing essentially that can be... Um, that can be captured in terms of your content. So see this layer right here, layer zero. So if we wanted to capture yet another part of the screen, let's say this part of the screen where the sign is, is something we wanted to capture, then we could capture three areas and have that all outputted here in the final uh, video if we wanted. So let's say, for example, there's multiple characters or multiple areas, uh, a kill feed, whatever it may be that you want to capture. You can do a third area and even more than that if you choose. And if you'd like to remove that content, you absolutely can. Uh, you can remove any of the content you want just by hitting the garbage can here uh, next to that particular layer and it will uh, get rid of that content. Cool? Awesome. So that's how that's how that works. So all of the rest of this can be customized, by the way, with the editor options. So you can choose like if you're looking at the final product, let's say you don't want 
to see these uh, lines here around each piece of content, you wanna see what the final product actually looks like, you can click off input borders and output borders, and it'll show you just a clean version of the video. So you can make sure everything's lined up properly, and you'll see a clean version of what will actually be outputted to social media. Cool? That is literally everything you need to know about this particular editor except the final step, of course. And the final step is to compile it so that you can actually post this on social media. So hit the compile button and it'll ask you for a title uh, for your clip. Go ahead and name it whatever. I'm gonna call mine clip two. You name yours, whatever you want it to be. You're gonna select your frame rate. I'm just gonna do 30, you can do 60. I'm gonna do 1080p because that's unlocked with Pro. And uh, I'm, I leave rocket boosters on it makes it go faster. So why wouldn't you make it go faster? Okay, so start compilation. I don't understand why you wouldn't use rocket boosters. I don't know. So now the clip is compiling and it gives you a notification that the clip will show up in the cross clip mobile app. So this is going to be the final step for you to post on social media. I have the cross clip mobile app. It takes two to three minutes to compile, it says. In my experience, it's way faster. Look, it's already done. Uh, and this was live, right? So you can either download the clip directly to your computer here, or you can share directly from social media on desktop if you want, or you can open it back up in the editor, or you can delete the clip all here on desktop. But what most of you guys are gonna wanna do with these clips is you are going to want to pull it up on the mobile app so that you can use it on mobile. And so let me show that to you. I've got the cross clip mobile app here I'm using in real time. And so now the clip is here on the mobile app and that'll make it easier to share on things like TikTok and Instagram and what have you. Uh, and as you can see, the clip is right here uh, in the top left, I can hit share. And then when I hit share, boom, I can select the social media platform of my choice and I can post the clip. I'm gonna do separate tutorials on that part of the process, but as you can see, it's seamless, right? You create the clips here on desktop, and then as soon as you create them on desktop, they're showing up on your mobile app that the mobile app is free on Android and iOS for you to post instantly. So the recommended workflow I would give to all of you guys would be to basically grab the clip, go edit it and export it in cross clip, and then clip a bunch of clips at the same time in one editing session. So you can have just a library of them. Then you can have them all locked and loaded on your phone. So you can go post them as you see fit throughout the day or throughout the next week to really make a time efficient schedule for you to be able to get your Twitch clips out to grow your social media avenues. Thank you to Streamlabs for sponsoring this tutorial. I love CrossClip. I'm recommending it to all of my digital consulting clients right now. And check out the links below if you wanna just try it for free. It's freaking great. It saves a ton of time. Adios amigos.